Well, good morning, friend. Welcome back to my kitchen. We have a busy baking day ahead of us. So one of my really close friends is having a birthday party this weekend, and she asked if I would make the desserts for the party. Her only request for these desserts is that they were chocolate, chocolate, chocolate. They didn't have to be triple chocolate, but she just wanted chocolate-based desserts. So I had a lot of fun finding these three different recipes that we are gonna be making. I wanted all of them obviously chocolate-based because that was her request, but I wanted a little bit of a twist on each one. So we're gonna make a cake, a cheesecake, and a pie. I was trying to think of different types of desserts. The first one we're gonna be making is a black forest cheesecake, which I'm actually gonna start the crust right now. I've never made any of these desserts, so this is gonna be a fun adventure for both of us. And because this is for her birthday party, I thought I would try to kind of push my cooking skills just a little bit and go for ones that are probably a little more intricate than I would normally do. So black forest cheesecake is number one. And then we are gonna make a chocolate cake with a caramel cornflake filling that is gonna be super decadent and delicious. So I was trying to think chocolate with fruit, chocolate with caramel, and then chocolate and espresso. So the final thing we're gonna be making is a chocolate pudding pie that has some really good espresso notes in it. I just preheated the oven to 350 degrees. First thing we're gonna do is count out 35 Oreos into our food processor to make the crust. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 35. Now we're gonna add our butter. My friend's birthday party is tomorrow, so we're not gonna be completely assembling all of these desserts today. We are gonna get the majority of the desserts done today. Some of them need to cool overnight in the refrigerator, and some of them are just gonna be easier if they're frozen, and we're gonna work with them and decorate from frozen. So I'll kind of walk you through what we're gonna do today. We're gonna do the majority of the work today, and then how we're gonna finish these desserts tomorrow. So here is my springform pan for my black forest cherry cheesecake. And we're gonna pre-bake this crust. And it's gonna be easier if I line it with foil before we bake it because it'll be hot later. And we're gonna bake this in a bain marie. And if you've never made a cheesecake, I'll show you what that means when we get to it. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and take my Oreo crust or the beginning stages of the Oreo crust, and I'm gonna put them in the springform pan. I will link all these recipes down in the description box if you wanna try making any of these recipes yourself. Okay, we are gonna be making an Oreo crust for our chocolate pie, so I'm gonna leave this here and we're gonna use this in just a minute. So what I'm gonna do is evenly kind of make this crust on the bottom just so that it's, we're working with kind of a level amount. And then I'll start pushing it in and pushing it up the sides a little bit. And then I'm gonna take a measuring spoon and I'm gonna use this to push the crust into this springform pan. So now we're gonna bake this for 10 minutes. For the cherry compote filling, I need a pretty good size pan and we're gonna cook this first. This calls for an ingredient, a special ingredient that I had to go buy. This is cherry flavored brandy. It's Kirscht, K-I-R-S-C-H. So I'm probably not pronouncing that correctly. So you all will tell me how to pronounce that correctly. But I think that this is gonna take this dessert a little bit over the top. Now, if you don't like to cook, with alcohol, the recipe does give some substitutions you can use, but I thought it would be fun to go ahead and try this. And we are gonna cook it first with our berries. So I chose to use frozen berries for this. The recipe says you can use fresh or frozen. And I figured I would use frozen to save myself a step of having to pit all these cherries. So we need a total of five and a half cups. And it says, if using frozen, do not thaw them first. Okay. 
So I just used two 16 ounce bags of frozen cherries. Now I'm gonna measure out, ooh, that smells good, our kirsch. And we don't need very much of this, just two and a half tablespoons. Along with some granulated sugar. Now this is gonna cook for about 10 to 15 minutes. So while our crust is cooking, we do have a couple more ingredients we need to add to this, but we're gonna wait until this softens. So while this is cooking down, I'm gonna go ahead and make the crust for our pie. Now this crust doesn't have to bake, but we do need to melt one stick of butter. I'm gonna get my food processor back here. And this does need to chill before we can actually put our pudding into it. So this is a kind of a perfect thing to do at this point. That's my timer. Let's go ahead and get this out of the oven. I'm gonna leave my oven on because we're gonna need it to bake the cheesecake. I'm gonna have a, a drink of coffee here. I have not finished my morning coffee and I'm gonna go ahead and melt this butter. And while this is melting, we'll count out our Oreos. For this recipe, we need 38 Oreos. 36, 36 and 38. There's a really fun ingredient in this crust, which is one teaspoon of espresso powder. This is an instant espresso powder. Anytime I see a recipe that adds a little bit of coffee or vanilla to something chocolate-based, I always think of the Barefoot Contessa because she would always say, anytime she was making anything chocolate, that you needed to add a little bit of coffee or a little bit of vanilla to bring out those chocolate notes. The thing I like about this recipe when I found it is that all the components are homemade. So we're gonna make, well, I didn't make the Oreos, <laughs> but the chocolate pudding, the whipped cream, and we're gonna make a chocolate ganache that we're gonna make these beautiful swirls on are all gonna be homemade. So it's gonna make for a very decadent and delicious chocolate pie. I have made homemade Oreos before, but it's been a long time. So now all we're gonna do is take this beautiful cookie batter and get this into our pie crust. And this has a lot of crust to it, which is amazing because I don't know about you, but the crust on an Oreo crust pie or the crust on a cheesecake is some of my favorite part. So when there's a good, generous amount, that always makes me one happy person. I have been known to actually double the crust in some cheesecake recipes and things just because I like the crunch that that adds. So I'm gonna do the same technique with this one where I'm gonna use my hands to kind of evenly distribute the crumb. And then I'll go in with my measuring spoon and push everything in to create a nice firm crust. I'm gonna go pop this in the freezer and then we're gonna finish up our cherry component for our cheesecake. Now the recipe said do not drain the liquid because we're gonna turn this into a sauce. These cherries have been boiling now for a few minutes and they're definitely softer than when we started. So I have a little bit of cornstarch and water here that I'm gonna mix up because it kind of settled together. Get it into a slurry. I'm gonna pour this into our cherries and let this cook until it thickens a little bit. It's already looking really nice. The goal is to coat the back of a spoon, which we did. So now I'm gonna add the last component, which is a little bit of almond extract. And I am gonna measure this out because a little bit goes a long way. And it already smells fantastic in here. Between the Oreos, the cherry, the almond extract, Yum. Now this recipe said to cut the cherries in half. Well, I kind of wanted to keep them whole because I thought that that would be pretty and I didn't want to cut the frozen cherries in half. So I do want to give this a taste test though to see what it tastes like with the cherries, almond and kirsch and the sugar just to make sure that it's got a good sweetness to it. Wow, that is so good. This. Kirsch, I'm, I really apologize if I'm pronouncing this correct, incorrectly, but adds just a really interesting flavor to it. It's not 
crazy like boozy, but it just adds a complexity to it. I'm sure it'd be really good without it, but the almond extract really takes us over the top. So what we need to do is actually have this cool completely. I guess we don't need it cold, but we don't wanna put that boiling hot filling into our cheesecake. So I'm gonna load these dishes. I like to make sure before I do any sort of cooking days like this, I unload my dishwasher before I get started so I can add dishes directly to my dishwasher. So I'm gonna to try to clean as I go to make this easier. I wanna transfer it out of this pot to cool so that it cools a little bit quicker. I'm gonna need this to make our pudding, so I'm gonna go rinse this out before this cherry mixture hardens. Now for the cheesecake portion of this recipe, we need to weigh out eight ounces of semi-sweet chocolate. And I just have some semi-sweet chocolate chips that I'm gonna use for this. I think technically probably you're supposed to use a bar of chocolate, but I only have extra dark. And so I'm gonna use the semi-sweet chips that I have instead of using the bar of extra dark chocolate. Get this on ounces, zero this out. Perfect, eight ounces there. So I'm just gonna pop this in the microwave and melt this in the microwave. Perfect. Now this recipe stresses multiple times to make sure you use room temperature ingredients. So what I did last night is actually pulled these blocks of cream cheese out of the refrigerator. I let them sit out overnight. And then my eggs, I took them out before I got ready for the day. So hopefully we will be working with nice room temperature ingredients. And we need to get this cream cheese into our mixer and we need to mix this for about two minutes by itself to get any lumps or anything out of this cream cheese. It doesn't take much for this to get light and fluffy when the cream cheese is nice and room temperature. So now we're going to add our sugar and we're gonna beat this with the sugar for one minute. Now I have one of our flavoring agents, which is gonna be a good amount of vanilla. Now I'm gonna add three fourths cup of sour cream. It says to gently mix this in. Now I'm gonna add my melted chocolate, which is not hot anymore. It's nice and room temperature. Now we're gonna add our last and final ingredient to the base of this cheesecake, and that is 95 grams or one cup of cocoa powder. I figured with something like cocoa powder, I would rather weigh it out because it is a powder, and so it can vary in its density depending on how long it's been sitting and things like that. So for a more accurate measurement, I, and I already had my scale out, I'm gonna weigh it. And then I'm gonna weigh this directly into my sifter because this cocoa powder has lumps and clumps in it and I want to be able to sift it into my cheesecake batter mixture and get any of those lumps out. Cheesecake is one of my favorite desserts to make for a dinner party. If you are new to having dinner parties and you want to make a lot of the components for your dinner party yourself, Cheesecake can be your best friend because it actually tastes better if you make it the day before or even a day or two before. And so it's one of those desserts that you can kind of reduce some of that stress on yourself if you make it in advance. And you serve it cold and refrigerated. And so it's a really great dessert to have for dinner parties. So I make cheesecake all the time, but I have never made a chocolate cheesecake before. So this is kind of fun. And I've never stuffed the middle of a cheesecake before. I have stuffed a cake with a cheesecake, 
and I have put different fruit components on the top of cheesecakes, but I've never stuffed it with a fruit component, so this is gonna be fun. I actually have a dinner party that I am hosting this friend who's having her birthday and some other friends in about a week and a half, and I plan to make a peach crumble cheesecake. So we'll see how this goes, and it's gonna make me either more excited for the peach crumble cheesecake or more nervous for the peach crumble cheesecake. Okay, so I wanna make sure I get this cocoa powder in there as well, because we weighed this out. All right, this is done. Now, speaking of the fact that I like to make cheesecakes all the time, I bought myself a special piece of equipment yesterday and I didn't think it was gonna come in time and it just showed up on my doorstep. So what this is, is a silicone bowl that goes around your cheesecake liner. I normally don't like to have like single use items in my house. This is definitely a single use item, but I've had more than once where I have had my foil break in the Bain Marie or the water bath when it's baking. And I really, because I like to make cheesecake so much, I thought I would finally invest in this. And I didn't even know this was a thing until yesterday when I was researching recipes and looking up things. And look at that. It fits perfectly. This is a nine inch springform pan. This, I actually just bought this too. Most cheesecake recipes call for a nine inch springform pan. And for years I've been using an eight inch springform pan. And so I can link this silicone liner thing down below if you're interested in it, but it is a single use item. But for someone like me who makes a lot of cheesecakes, I figured it was time since I just found out about it to go ahead and invest in it. So what we're gonna do now is actually assemble our cheesecake. I just put some water on to boil for our Ban Marie and our cherries have now cooled to room temperature. I did pop them in the freezer for just a couple minutes so that they would cool a little bit quicker for me. I guess what I'm curious about is after it's baked, is it gonna be easy to remove this from the silicone liner? We'll find out together. So we're gonna take our cheesecake batter and put some of this in the bottom. And I just reread the recipe to make sure I was doing this correctly. And it says we probably are gonna end up with a little extra batter. So that's always good to know. Now we're gonna put some cherries. We're gonna reserve this to put on top of our cheesecake after it bakes. But what I need to do is actually put this into a roasting pan, or this is my brazier actually, this here. So get this in the oven. This is boiling water that I'm pouring between my braising pan and my new silicone lined cheesecake pan. The recipe says this is gonna bake for one hour and 40 minutes to two hours. So what I think I'm gonna do, I just poured a little water on my cheesecake. The recipe doesn't say to do this, but I think I'm gonna put a little bit of foil. I'll just reuse that foil that I had wrapped around this cheesecake. I think I'm gonna tent this just a little bit because I don't want that chocolate topping to overcook before the center of the cheesecake is cooked because this is one large cheesecake. And I'm gonna keep a close eye on the water level because I might need to add some more water. Normally I use a big roasting pan when I do this, but I just got rid of my roasting pan and the new one that I bought has not arrived yet. 
So we're making do with this, and this actually is working really well. Okay, so in the oven for a good long time. Okay, get that door closed. Now I'm glad the recipe said what to do with all this extra filling. Even with me buying a nine inch springform pan, there is still a lot of filling here. And I don't wanna just throw that away. So what the recipe said you can do is make some individual cheesecakes using muffin tins. So all I'm gonna do is add four muffin liners to this muffin tin, because that's what it said to do. And then a whole Oreo in the bottom. So this is what we can have for dessert. My family can tonight because I can't cut into this cake until we go to my friend's birthday. So this is kind of working out perfect. And then we're going to fill each muffin tin with a scoop of batter. I'm gonna get these mini cheesecakes in the oven and we'll get our pie done while these are baking and then I need to reduce the temperature of this oven so we can bake our cakes in this oven. And this pudding is gonna come together really easily. For our pudding, we are gonna weigh out some of our different ingredients. So I've got my scale here and a bowl. We're gonna weigh out the dry ingredients first. So I'm gonna weigh this out in grams and I'm gonna start with 36 grams of cornstarch. Okay, that's 36. Just eight grams of cocoa powder, which I forgot to tear it, so I've got to do the math. So pretty easy math, but we got that there. I'm gonna go ahead and tear it now. Now I'm gonna add our salt and our instant espresso powder. Now, as I just added this salt to this bowl, I realized I forgot to add salt to my cheesecake. <laughs> I won't tell if you won't tell. I do like to have salt in my desserts because I think it helps balance everything, but it's gonna be okay. I think it's still gonna be really delicious. So now I'm gonna go ahead and weigh out my milk. Now, if you don't prefer to weigh your ingredients, this recipe that I'm gonna link for you has the regular cups measuring here, so you don't have to weigh things out if you don't have a scale or you prefer not to use the scale when it comes to measuring out your baked good ingredients. Now I need 10 ounces of chocolate. cheesecakes are done so I'm gonna go ahead and get these out and then I need to reduce the temperature on this oven and for the cake the recipe is in Celsius so I had to convert it to Fahrenheit and the conversion was 335 degrees so I'm gonna go ahead and get that preheated because my oven I don't think I can set it in Celsius I almost forgot one of the ingredients in our powder mixture and that is a half a cup of heavy cream. So let me grab a half a cup. And so I'm gonna add one half cup of heavy cream to this powder mixture that we mixed up earlier. And then once we have our pudding almost done, we'll add some butter and some vanilla extract. But I do need to whisk this cream into our cocoa and cornstarch. So our pudding has thickened up nicely and we're gonna make it a little bit more decadent and turn the stove off by of course adding a good healthy splash of vanilla and a couple tablespoons of beautiful, delicious butter. I'm gonna cut this butter down just a little bit so it melts a little bit quicker into our pudding. And then I have my bowl that I'm gonna refrigerate my pudding in. 
and a sieve. And I'm gonna run this pudding through the sieve once I melt this butter and get that vanilla mixed in. In case there's any lumps, we want a nice texture on this pudding. That's how easy it is to make homemade pudding. And it'll thicken up in the fridge. I'm gonna go pop this in the fridge and now our two components of the four components we need for this recipe are done. We will assemble this pie tomorrow and we will make one of the components tomorrow and then I need to reread the recipe to see if we need to make the ganache for the topping for tomorrow. But this is pretty warm. I put this parchment paper on here so that when it cools, it's not gonna get a weird film or skin on the top. But I don't wanna pop this into my fridge while it's still this hot. So I'm just gonna let this cool here for a little bit. I'm gonna clean up my mess. The cake recipe that I have this oven preheated for is all weight measurements. So I can put away all or almost all of my cups and spoons because we're not gonna need this for this next recipe. And I need to wash this out because we're gonna make the caramel, the cornflake caramel center for this cake. And I need to make the caramel in this pot. So I'm gonna do a few dishes and then we are gonna go ahead and make the cake for the cake that we're gonna make. This cake is actually what inspired this entire cooking day. It popped up on my Instagram feed and I thought, you know what, I need to make that. And then when my friend asked if I would make chocolate desserts, I knew that was gonna be for sure one of the ones on my list. And then I had fun searching for the other two that we're making. So for this cake recipe, we need two eight inch cake pans. And I actually just bought myself these cake pans. When Josh and I first got married, I bought myself really nice quality nine inch cake pans. And anytime a recipe calls for eight inch cake pans, I just use those. But because I do so much baking, I finally figured it was time to invest in some eight inch cake pans. So now I have eight inch and nine inch cake pans. And now I have an eight inch and nine inch spring form pan. So I should be set but I do have these pre-cut parchment papers, but they are for nine inch cake pans, not eight inch. So I just trimmed about half an inch around the whole area, which means they now fit in here perfectly. And then what I'm gonna do is grab out my pastry brush and I am out of cooking spray. So if you had cooking spray, I would use that instead. And I'm just going to put a little bit of oil and use my pastry brush to kind of make this a non-stick surface so that our cakes come out of these pans beautifully. You can usually get away with using a nine inch cake pan if the recipe calls for an eight inch cake pan and vice versa, you just need to adjust the cooking time. But it does change the height of the cake. And I thought that this cake was so beautiful when I saw the Instagram video of it. So I wanted it to come out like the video. So that's my goal. So that's what I'm doing here. And that's why I figured I would go ahead and finally invest in the proper size. So here we go. So I've got my parchment paper all oiled up. I like to get this ready so that when I'm done with my cake batter, I can just pop it into the pans. Now this cake comes together a little differently than most cakes I make. So I'm just gonna follow the recipe exactly like it says. We are gonna use grams for this. We need 195 grams of oil. And because I'm gonna be using a bunch of liquid, I think what I'm gonna do is measure out my first ingredient into my mixing bowl, and then I'm gonna grab another bowl so that if I need to take out ingredients, I can. Zero that out. Now we need 250 grams of buttermilk. Now we need sugar.
The last component of this is coffee. And I have some cooled coffee from this morning's pot. So I'm just gonna pour it in this that had the buttermilk. And I need 225 grams of coffee. This recipe does not call for vanilla extract, but I can't help myself, so I'm just gonna add a splash of vanilla to the coffee. And then I'm gonna alternate between these dry ingredients and this cake batter. I'm just cleaning up a little bit. I got my dishwasher started before we make the caramel and my timer went off for this cheesecake and I think it's done. So we're gonna pull this off. Ah, I don't wanna ruin the top of it. I got it off without breaking the top. So I am going to shake this. I don't wanna stick it. It's got a little bit of jiggle to it, but when I feel it, oh, that was my timer for the actual cakes. Got a nice jiggle to it, but it feels nice and firm. So what I'm gonna do is turn the oven off and I'm just gonna close this. And I'm gonna let this cool in the oven with the oven cooling too. The idea when you're cooling cheesecake in the oven with the oven off is that you're slowly reducing the temperature and it's less likely to get that big crack in the top of it. So we're just gonna let this sit here. I can tell these cakes are not quite done, so I'm gonna set the timer for another four minutes. So before I make the caramel for the filling of our cake, I'm gonna wait till those cakes come out of the oven so I can pay full attention to the caramel. So I'm just gonna keep cleaning this kitchen. Here are our components for our caramel, cream, butter, salt, corn flakes, and our sugar. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this started. And I'm not going to stir this or mix this or anything. We're just gonna let this turn into caramel. This is where the excitement kind of comes in. This is the component of this cake that really intrigued me. And so we are gonna look for this sugar to come to a amber color. And then we will slowly stir in the cream. Once the cream is incorporated, we'll slowly mix in the butter and then we'll put it back on the stove and heat it to a temperature of, I think 240. So I need to get my candy thermometer out. It makes me a little nervous that I'm supposed to look for a particular color to know when to add the cream, but we'll go from there. And if it doesn't end up working, I'll try it again. Here I have a baking dish with a piece of parchment paper because once we mix in our cornflakes, we need this to cool and we need to lay it out on a lined baking sheet. And I think our cake is done. Well, they've got quite a bit of a wiggle to them. I think I'm gonna give it another two minutes. I'm definitely no expert at making caramel, but one thing I do know is that it is important to have a heavy duty pan that is not only thick on the bottom, but you want it thick all the way on the, like all the way up the sides so that the heat is a nice good heat retention throughout the whole pan. I think this is now ready. It's dark because I'm using organic unbleached sugar and I think all the sugar crystals are melted. So I'm gonna turn the heat off and this is where it can get kind of tricky why you want all your ingredients pre-measured out. Got my cream here. Whoa, that's hot. So I have the heat back on to melt the sugar. We 
We need to get our butter and salt in here too. I've never made caramel like this where you don't add water to it first. And so this is really different from anything I'm used to. But the only way I'm gonna get better at these type of techniques is by practicing them. So I gotta get all this seized sugar caramel out of my whisk. The recipe said to use a whisk, but it is now stuck in there. I need to get this butter in here too. So we're at 237 now, we are almost there. This is taking about 15 minutes for this to come up to temperature after adding the milk and cream. I've been standing here stirring it constantly. We're about half a degree away, so I'm gonna take this thermometer out. And I need to work quickly and carefully because this is molten. And let's go ahead and get this stirred in here. I'd rather it be on the cooler side than the hotter side. Okay, it's gotta work quick here, really, really quick. probably skip this step and just use marshmallows and brown butter. That would be really good in a cake too. Okay. This caramel cornflake mixture <laughs> gave me a run for my money. I figured since I have these cake pans that are the exact same size as my cakes, instead of later having to deal with cutting them out tomorrow, I would just put a piece of parchment paper down in here and now they are shaped to the proper size. In probably about 15 minutes, once they harden a little bit, I'll probably put a new piece of parchment paper on this cookie sheet and have them come out of here just so they don't get stuck in here. My pudding is now cool, so I'm gonna pop that in the fridge. My cakes are still a little warm, so once they completely cool, I'll wrap them in two layers of saran wrap. And my cheesecake is still cooling in the oven. It's still very warm. Not hot, but it's just warm. I'm gonna let that cool quite a bit more and then we'll pop that into the refrigerator. And then tomorrow, we are gonna make two different types of ganache and a couple different types of whipped cream and we are gonna pull these beautiful chocolate desserts together. So I'll see you tomorrow. Good morning, friend. It is now the day of the party and we are gonna pull these desserts together. So the first dessert we're gonna work on this morning or the next component for this dessert is the cake. We made the majority of the components for all three of these desserts yesterday, but there's a couple components that we're actually gonna to make today. And we're gonna start with making the ganache for the cake. We're actually gonna make a whipped ganache frosting and it needs to chill for 30 minutes. So we're gonna make the ganache, have it chill. While it's chilling, we're going to go ahead and assemble our pie because we've got all the components for the pie. So I'm gonna bring this over here. This morning before I got ready for the day, I did weigh out the butter and milk chocolate that we need for this ganache along with our cream. And we're gonna melt this in 30 second intervals until it's completely melted. I also grabbed out this morning before I got ready for the day, a couple serving dishes, and I've got a game plan of how I'm gonna decorate our three desserts and what I'm gonna serve them on. And I also harvested a bouquet of flowers for my friend for her birthday. Got a couple of the dahlias. Oh, my microwave's done. So this recipe calls for milk chocolate and for butter. So 
so I don't want to overheat this. I've made ganache frostings before, but I've never made a whipped one. So this is gonna be fun. Today is my favorite part of this kind of baking day where we get to see all of our hard work come together and hopefully it's gonna look beautiful. Now we've fully incorporated our butter with our milk chocolate. Now what we're gonna do is add our cream. Now we're supposed to mix this until it's glossy and smooth. So it was looking like it was starting to seize, but I just put it in the microwave for another 30 seconds to warm up the cream. The recipe didn't say to warm the cream up. I think the cold cream was actually causing the chocolate to harden. And so it definitely helped to pop this in the microwave for another 30 seconds. I was worried that we were gonna ruin this, but it's actually looking really beautiful now. So next time I do this, I would just pop the cream in the microwave by itself for 30 seconds before mixing it into the chocolate and butter to take some of that chill off the cream. So this is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. You could definitely pour this over top of a cake and use this as a frosting, as a ganache frosting. But what we're gonna do is have this chill for 30 minutes and then we're gonna whip it and we're gonna use it and we're gonna pipe it as a whipped ganache frosting. So in the fridge this goes. And while that's chilling, we're gonna go ahead and melt some more chocolate. I have milk chocolate and butter here. And this is what's gonna make our flour top for our pie. I have the pie crust out and our pudding out that we made yesterday. This also needs to chill before we can make the flowers. So we're going to make this next. I'm gonna go ahead and pop this into the freezer for five minutes. And while this is freezing, we can go ahead and get our whipped cream started. We're gonna use the mixer quite a few times today, so we'll just rinse and wash the bowl out between uses. Make sure that's off before I plug it in. For the whipped cream top, I'm gonna to add cream, some vanilla, and some powdered sugar. We are gonna be making one more type of whipped cream. So I'm gonna put that back over there because we're gonna use that in just a minute. And we're gonna check on our chocolate. I have never made these types of curls before. So this is gonna be a fun experiment today. So I'm gonna grab, I think my bench scraper and Pushing a little too hard. Let's try that again. I think we need this to firm up just a little bit more. It said if it's sticking to your knife, it's not cool enough. Back in the freezer it goes. That popped out really nicely. So 
Some people will try to take the bottoms off their cheesecakes. I don't ever do that. I just cut into it and serve it off this, but I do want to put it on a serving plate. So here's the cheesecake. We need to make the decoration to go on the top of this, which is going to be another whipped cream, but it's going to be a much thicker whipped cream because we're going to pipe it. Same ingredients, just a different ratio. This is not in the recipe, but I'm just gonna add probably about a quarter of a teaspoon of gelatin to this whipped cream to help set it up even more. I'm just gonna mix that in very gently. So this is a nice firm whipped cream, which we'll be able to pipe onto our cheesecake. Before we add our finishing touches on this cheesecake, I thought what would be a good idea would be to melt some chocolate and actually use it as a glue because I'm gonna have to drive this cheesecake to my friend's house and I don't want this sliding around in my car. So what I'm gonna do is add probably about an ounce and a half of just melted chocolate, whatever kind, and I'm just using this as a glue at the base of my serving dish so that I can secure this cheesecake. It's moving around a little bit right now, but this cheesecake is cold and that will set up really quickly. I got a little bit of chocolate here. I'm gonna wipe off the edge. I think instead of piping the whipped cream on, I'm going to take my cookie scoop. I'm gonna dollop whipped cream on. I'm gonna go across from each other. Well, let's see. No, I'm not. Oh, shoot. And now I can shake it and it's not moving on the plate because it is now fully secure. And how beautiful does that look? One of my kind of unspoken goals for 2024 was to become better at baking and decorating cakes. I think that's pretty cute. Okay, so I'm gonna pop this in the fridge. I'm hoping that by adding that gelatin, it's gonna allow that whipped cream to set and it will just stay perfect like this until we serve it tonight. So into the fridge it goes. I just pulled this chocolate out of the freezer and it is now very frozen. So it is not curling like it's supposed to. So I'm gonna let this sit at room temperature for a few minutes and we're gonna check on our ganache. The recipe says this needs to be at about room temperature before we can whip it. So I think what I'm gonna do is actually just grab my candy thermometer and I'm gonna take its temperature. It's at 86 degrees Fahrenheit, 87 and climbing. So this is not room temperature yet. So all I'm gonna do is give this a little mix up. Try to get the outside temperature, the same temperature as the inside temperature. Pop it back in the fridge for another about 10 minutes. I think after mixing, I'm gonna take its temperature one more time because the outside is obviously gonna be cooler than the very center. So friend, I think I'm gonna give up on this idea. You all probably can tell me what I've done wrong, but now it is way too warm and it's barely been sitting at room temperature for a couple minutes. So I am going to call an audible
And instead of doing big flowery curls on the top, I'm just gonna take this bar of chocolate and my vegetable peeler, and I'm just gonna peel some chocolate curls onto the top. I think I know what I did wrong. <laughs> the recipe said to use semi-sweet chocolate or dark chocolate, and I was using milk chocolate. So that could be my problem is that there's too much butter fat in it or something, not enough chocolate percentage, and that's why I didn't want to set up, but this looks just as beautiful to me. We officially have two of our chocolate desserts done. I was just thinking as I was washing out these dishes how excited I am about these desserts. Like I said, I am not a professional baker by any stretch of the imagination, but I have been practicing over the last year and things are looking really good. It's not my personality to be a very precise type cook. I tend to be a better cook because I like to kind of be creative in things, but I'm learning with baking, you can get really creative obviously with the decorations. Now I'm not at that point where I'm really coming up with my own decorations. I am basically following <laughs> what you know these recipes say to do to decorate or their ideas but once i get the fundamentals of getting comfortable with the actual baking process then i'm sure it won't take as much energy g to come up with the creative part like coming up with my own flavor combinations and things like that so i'm having a lot of fun and thanks for being here along the journey with me it wasn't an intentional goal that I set out in this year to kind of have more fun baking. But just throughout the dinner parties we've been having and things like that, it's just been kind of part of 2024's journey. And it's fun. So here we've got our ganache. I think this is a good temperature to whip. So we're gonna whip this, whip it good. I dried off all of these bowls and mixers really well because I do not want to incorporate water into this chocolate at all because that could make it seize. Now we're just going to whip it. That looks like the picture, so I think we're going to call that good. How beautiful is that? This is the one I've been the most excited about decorating. So I guess I saved the one that I was most excited about for last. And how beautiful are these caramel cornflake discs. So we've got our ganache here. I need to grab an offset spatula. I probably should buy a turntable. My mom, if you've been around here for any length of time, you've seen she is a beautiful cake decorator and she has a turntable for her cake decorating and it does make things a little bit easier. But we're not going to be frosting the whole entire cake. So for this one, it's probably not as necessary. But for future cakes that I want to make where I want to get a nice smooth finish on it, they are very, very helpful. But you'll see, this is kind of, I think what they call like a naked cake. We're just going to layer all of our beautiful components together to make a beautiful cake. Let's see if I can get this in the center. I wasn't going to do this, but to make this look even more professional, I'm going to do it. The recipe did say to do it, but I was going to skip it. You can see how there's a dome on top of this cake. I'm gonna cut that off. I've never done this before. That's why I was gonna skip it. But we're gonna go ahead and cut it off. I'm gonna grab a bread knife. I think that's gonna be the easiest way to cut this. Now the recipe did say it would, it's best to use one of those guided knives but I don't have one of those, so we're just gonna use what I have, and that's a long bread knife. I didn't wanna do this because I felt like it's kind of wasteful, but I'll find something to do with it. It did say you can actually decorate the cake with the breadcrumbs. It's gonna lay a lot flatter. Much better. That sits a lot more evenly now. Thank you. 
I'm gonna put this on here just to glue the top cake on top. I don't actually want it showing. Do I want it flat side up or textured side up? I think flat side up. The original designer of this cake piped on the top, but I'm gonna go with the cookie scoop because I liked that look and it was a lot easier. So I'm just gonna cookie scoop a couple dollops of the ganache frosting on the top. So here we have our three decadent over the top desserts. We have our black forest cherry chocolate cheesecake. We have our caramel and chocolate cornflake cake along with our espresso chocolate pie. I could not be happier with how these turned out. It is gonna be a couple hours before I'm gonna package them up and bring them over to my friend's house. So what I'm probably gonna do is grab a cardboard box and stick these in cardboard boxes with towels kind of tucked around them so that they don't go flying <laughs> around my car. And then I will just be very cautious when I'm driving to try to have them not tip over or anything. So this is gonna be fantastic. I am so excited to give the gift of homemade desserts for my friend's birthday. It is an honor that she asked me to make desserts for her. And if you wanna make any of these desserts, I will link them down in the description box so you can find the recipes and try them yourself. So thank you friends so much for taking time out of your day to spend time with me as we baked up a storm. So thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. If you wanna watch some more of my other videos, I'll pop them here. You can go enjoy between now and my next upload. I hope you're having a fantastic day and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye friend.